Now on the off chance that you don't know what an inguinal hernia is, essentially right on the lower kind of section of your abs, right about here, um, basically you'll have a little tear or kind of rip in the fascia, and what can happen is your intestines can push through that tear, resulting in a little bulge. So you see like a little bulge. First I was like, what the heck is this? And you can kind of push it back into its cavity. So most people, usually what you'll do is you go to your doctor, and if it's super small, they'll say, I'll wait on it till it gets bigger, um, and eventually it will grow in size, I guess as the rip continues. Um, I chose to just get it done really early because frankly it annoyed me having it whenever I lifted I always wanted to push it in I'm screwing around and if it's you if you're experiencing right now and it's very annoying I really recommend a truss it's just kind of like this weird thing that you can see here on the screen it's like a hundred bucks but it's basically is acting as your ab and pushing it in I felt like I was wearing like a gun strap or something putting it over the the tear but it is what it is now um, I guess let's go into a little bit more detail about how it happened so obviously you're gonna look at me and go oh you did it because of lifting because of bad form or not appropriate breathing practice that's what everyone said to me but I asked my surgeon and he assured me it probably wasn't from that um, a lot of the signs of it are hereditary so for instance if you're male if you're white if you're tall and as you can see from me check 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 but the main reason it actually happens is and why it's more prevalent in male is we have an inguinal canal essentially it's a inguinal canal is so that your testicles can drop you know as you grow up and hit puberty however this can leave us predisposed to a kind of a weakness in that fascia resulting in that rip that I said earlier so we're kind of in a tough spot as is and obviously lifting heavy can complement that my whole family all of my uncles my father have had multiple hernias so I knew it's probably coming for me it really isn't the end of the world if you're watching this you know and you have it don't stress it at all it really was like the smallest thing ever I'm gonna teach you how to recover I'm gonna give you some tips some insights we'll be good to go so to reiterate it will not go away a lot of people will kind of wonder you know oh it's so small if i wear the truss will it go away i saw comments like if i keep wearing this thing it might be gone soon enough that's not the way it works so usually the hernia will be exposed you know when you're strained bent over standing and will usually go away when you're lying down that's kind of how they work um it's basically just by how your abdomen is placed when you eat more food and inflammatory foods it will encourage it so that's something i did to kind of combat it when i had it i tried to avo avoid foods that were highly inflammatory onions coffee fatty meats different things like that just google a list you'll see a bunch or slap some on the screen here so you can minimize it while you have it but ultimately you're gonna have to decide with your doctor when you want to get it surgically done now there's two types of surgery uh, surgery there's laparoscopic essentially where they would make four incisions and use a laser to kind of get it done my doctor cautioned against this for my first one because essentially you're messing with your rectus abdominis when you don't really need to when they can kind of just cut in that one area and get it done now there's two types of repairs past that for open repair where they're actually cutting you open so that's what I had done there's mesh and non mesh so non mesh some people argue it's better it's more natural they're tying your abs over top of each other and just creating that strength so they'll basically come in cut you up and then tie them over now there's a mesh repair mesh repairs have had a lot of bad historical issues a lot of people are suing their doctors and things like that because of them because early meshes have been shown to actually cause pain constant nerve pain and they're really kind of frankly sketchy so I kind of wanted to avoid it but after doing my research I found that the FDA has said I believe after 2017 I'll put it on the screen once again um, that the new meshes have been proven to be a lot safer and they've basically eliminated all those old meshes that were causing problems so you will be pretty safe the mesh helps limit reoccurrence which is a big thing for me because I'm not trying to get this done again you know I just wanted to get back in it I hated not lifting I've been lifting for 10 years and I have not taken more than a week off so this has been like a little bit of a challenge for me mentally and I've just kind of said hey I'm gonna take this hat on I'm gonna recover as quick as possible and as you can see after five weeks I feel like I'm doing quite quite well um, my surgeon even told me I recovered really fast so now let's get into the recovery portion so transition to the surgery it was super super jokes because while I was waiting for my surgery I saw another youtuber in there so I'll show you some of the vlog footage is pretty hilarious. You can see I'm a little bit stressed, I'm not gonna lie. All right guys, so I walk into this waiting room and who is here? What's up? But, but Josh. You're here for brain surgery? Yeah, no. brain surgery, the yeah, third so one. And so because I chose open surgery, that's what I'm gonna talk to you. I know laparoscopic, you got a way faster recovery. I've heard of people like just being up and moving so quick and pretty much back at it in a week. So I can't speak to laparoscopic myself, but I will refer to open surgery repair and how to heal from it. So the first question is, is it painful? The cool thing with open repair even is they will get you moving right away. So essentially two or three hours after your surgery, they will get you up. 
Um, I'm sure you'll get a wheelchair out of the hospital or surgery room, but from that they do encourage you to walk as you are comfortable. Walking actually helps simulate and get the muscle kind of working again. Now obviously the big threat after surgery is blowing it out. So I was so worried. I'm like, oh, if I sit up, will I blow it out? Um, in my experience, I didn't feel too much strain. I found it was really hard. You know, the first few days it does hurt. I'm not going to lie. Like it's not a crazy pain. You know, you just, you feel like a shell of yourself. I felt very weak. I had a hard time getting on a bed, you know, and I had to kind of like wiggle myself around or getting in a car. I was like, just like an old man, you know, I was just moving super slow. I didn't feel myself, but all in all, they got you on painkillers and ain't too bad. I was prescribed um, Tylenols and aspirin, and I was also uh, prescribed hydromorphone, which is a more hard opioid, and I personally chose to try to avoid that so I could work. So the first day was super tough. I didn't really stress myself out too much post-surgery. You know, I just wanted to get back and rehydrate myself as quick as possible. So I packed some coconut water. Uh, the reason I like that. It's very high in potassium, it's very high in electrolytes, and it's a good introduction back to food without feeling sick because some people do feel sick after surgery. So I think coconut water post surgery is a great thing to kind of segue you back in. From there, I had some soup and crackers, and that felt amazing because I was starving because I wasn't able to eat the morning of. This stressed me out a bit. Even though it was only a few hours, I like to eat, as you can tell, I'm 210 pounds here. Um, so, first day, that was basically what happened you know, chill, you know, watch some TV, eat a bit of food as you're comfortable, get your sleep. Sleep is super important. Now, throughout the whole recovery process, I want to do everything I can to simulate myself and recover as quick as possible. So, high protein was a key thing, especially for me to maintain my muscle mass. I hold more muscle mass and I wasn't trying to lose a lot of it while I was under. So, this high protein can also help with muscular recovery. We've literally Literally had our muscles slid open from a surgery, so that's going to be your number one. So I was sticking to a high protein diet full of healthy food, so I felt powerful. Last thing you want to do is eat some crap, have your stomach kind of churning, feeling like garbage when you've just had a surgery and your whole abs are sore. So the soreness, I would describe it as, you know, on the wound, not so much. It just feels numb. I, if someone were to walk up and punch me, I think it'd be crazy. But standing, it wasn't too too bad. Then I remember feeling it kind of. So I had it on my right side. I remember feeling it up my obliques here. And it just felt really sore, like really bad doms from smashing my, uh, my abs really hard in the gym. But it's maybe like a three out of 10 pain. It was very minimal. Um, they recommend you take the pain meds before you feel the pain so it wasn't too bad. So fast forward, first week, what you're gonna do to heal and what the doctors recommend from my resources. Now bear in mind, I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. I'm talking about what I did. I'm not saying what you should do. Take the knowledge you can and formulate your own kind of expertise. I'm not trying to get sued here. But what I did was try to get as many steps as I could in each day from my house. So I was literally walking back and forth like this, touching the door, walking back and forth, touching the other door, just trying to get in as many steps as I can with my Apple Watch to use as a tracker. I remember the first, the second day I did 3,000, 4,000, then that next day was really hard for me for whatever reason, and I only did 2,000, but after that I did 6,000, and I just kept climbing until I got to 10K, and that was a huge motivator for me. Um, I found about 10 days is when you start to feel a lot, a lot better. At a, I think... On the seventh day, I actually went to the gym to walk on a treadmill. I was walking on 1.5 speed, zero incline. So I'm just getting away here. But the key thing is to stay active. So studies have shown that people that are more active actually do recover quicker. So that's gonna be your number one. So once you're in about a week, if you feel okay, bearing, you know, everyone's gonna have a different experience. Some people feel a lot more pain. Some people, you know, might not be as in shape and will have a harder time too. But the key thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get walking. Now from the first to second week, you're just gonna get on a treadmill when you can, walk outside, whatever you want. The weather sucked here. So just get moving, get walking, be intelligent. Now past that, I started to reintroduce myself to some weights. This isn't encouraged, but for me, it kept me sane. So I was only lifting 2.5 dumbbells and I was sitting there and basically doing triceps. So I do 20 reps of something like lateral raises, 20 reps of something like shoulders. So I would do three shoulder exercises essentially, take a rest, and then I would do like three chest exercises. I would do upper body movements that wouldn't strain this particular part of my abdomen. If you have the kind of the belly button one, it's a lot tougher because that's your rectus abdominis, so that's something to be aware of. But I slowly reintroduced myself to the weights. So that was basically weeks like two to three. Weeks three to four, I upped those weights to five pounds, to 10 pounds, to 15 pounds by the end of that week. And then after four weeks, you should see your surgeon and they'll let you know where you're at. Saying so, be very smart with lifting weights. You know, I babied myself. I didn't lift more than 20 pounds up until two weeks, as was recommended. You know, why, why risk it? I have heard of people blowing it out. It would be incredibly painful. You'd have to get it redone. So the number one thing I can recommend is listen to what the doctors tell you. It will err on the side of caution, but why risk it? You know, we want to come back. 
even for me, five weeks later right now, as you can see, I'm doing pretty good. My surgeon at the four weeks said, you're basically there. And he encouraged me that after six weeks, it would be virtually quite impossible to blow it out. So after that six weeks, you should get done about 80% of your healing. And from there, you can fully transition back to normal life. But that's kind of my quick breakdown. I mean, I'll answer people in the comments. I'll do my best. I'm not a doctor, you know, I'm a fitness dude. That's what I do. But I figured I'd make this video to give people some comfort. You know, if you got it coming up, it ain't that bad. You'll be cool. It really, really is not that big of a deal. It was super simple. I'm back at it. Life continues. Uh, thank you so much for watching this. You know, if you are watching this and you want some great exercises you can do to kind of rehab and recover back, definitely subscribe to our channel. We have a ton of great content. And if this video gets a kind of a good reception to it, I'll definitely do a part two and maybe make some direct workouts that could be followed. So smash that like button if you enjoyed this. Comment down below what's going on with you. Smash subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.